Introduction The Eastern Catholic Churches are in full communion with the whole Catholic Church. While they accept the canonical authority of the Holy See of Rome, they retain their distinctive liturgical rites, laws, customs, traditional devotions, and have their own theological emphasis. There are 24 rites that make up the Universal Catholic Church. We can separate them into Eastern and Western rites. In the Western Rite, the majority that make up the Universal Catholic Church is the Roman Latin Rite. In the Eastern Rite, there are 23 Sui Iuris Churches. In the Decree on the Catholic Churches of the Eastern Rite, Orientalium Ecclesiarum, the Second Vatican Council states that these Eastern Catholic Churches, along with the larger Latin Church, share equal dignity, so that none of them is superior to the others as regards rites, and they enjoy the same rites and are under the same obligations also in respect of preaching the gospel to the whole world under the guidance of the Roman Pontiff. The Eastern and Western Catholic Churches There are 24 rites in the Catholic Church, such as the Roman, Chaldean, Malabar, Syrian, Maronite, Malankara, Armenian, Albanian, Bulgarian, Belarusian, Greek, Hungarian, Italo-Albanian, Melkite, Romanian, Russian, Ruthenian, Slovak, Ukrainian, Yugoslav, Ethiopian, Coptic, Mozarabic, and Ambrosian. Antiochian Rite It is an Eastern Christian liturgical rite that employs the Divine Liturgy of St. James in the West Syriac dialect. Divine Liturgy of St. James is the oldest complete form of the Eastern Christian liturgies and is based on the traditions of the ancient rite of the Church of Jerusalem. The liturgy is named after the brother of Jesus, St. James. The liturgy of St. James is considered to be the oldest surviving liturgy developed for general use in the Church. The recitation of the Divine Liturgy of St. James is performed according to the worship rubrics of a particular rite, with specific parts chanted by the presider, the lectors, the choir, and the congregated faithful at certain times in unison. The Maronite Catholic Church, the Syrian Catholic Church, and the syro Malankar Catholic Church use this liturgy in their respective churches. Antiochian Order of Liturgy Malankar Catholics use the Antiochian Liturgy. The origin of this order of liturgy was in Jerusalem. However, in 70 AD, Jerusalem was destroyed and Christians fled. Pretty soon, Antioch developed as a center of the church in that region. Many churches in India use this liturgy, such as the Syro Malankar Catholic Church, Malankar Jacobite Church, Malankar Orthodox Church, Independent Syrian Church of Turiur, and the Malankar Marthoma Church. Emphasis of the Holy Scripture The elements and backgrounds of this liturgy can be traced back to the Jewish Christians. The fulfillment of the Old Testament sacrifices and offerings took place in the New Testament through Jesus Christ. The prayers and hymns of this liturgy connect the Old and New Testament events. The signs, symbols, events, and styles are all based on the Holy Scripture. Prayers and hymns are arranged intrinsically related to the Holy Scripture. Deacons read from the Old Testament and epistles, and the chief celebrant himself reads from the gospel with lighted candles on both sides, and incenses in front while all the faithful stand in awe and reverence. The Bible is kept on a special table known as the Evangelion Mesha, that is usually at the right-hand side of the Thronos. Mysteriousness The Holy Corbano is said to be a holy mystery in the Antiochian order. The substance and meaning of the Holy Corbano is beyond the understanding of human intellect. The presence of God is introduced mysteriously in the liturgy as human mind cannot comprehend the powerful presence of God. The angels tremble before God and cover their face with their wings. The mysteries of the liturgy are expressed in many ways. First, secret prayers of the second liturgy. The second way, the covering of the sanctuary with the veil. The third, services held behind the veil, and the fourth way, sacred body and blood being always kept covered away from the view of the faithful. Signs Signs in the liturgy are the means used to make human beings understand the divine things. For example, the cross on the Golgotha is covered with a red veil for 40 days 
after the Feast of the Resurrection. It signifies the presence of the risen Lord. The service around the fire for Christmas represents salvation. Service of the burial of the cross on Good Friday. These are signs signifying the event. Exhortation in the Liturgy Prayers and hymns contain the truth of faith. Prayers of the Promion and Cedro of the Liturgy teach in detail the theology of the particular sacraments and feasts. Promion is a prayer of praise, thanksgiving, and adoration. Promion serves as an introduction to the Cedro. Cedro is a unique prayer form in the West Syrian liturgical tradition, which developed around the 7th century and is closely related to the prose homilies of the early Syriac tradition. In the Jewish prayers, the Jews glorify God, recalling to mind with gratitude the intervention of God in the life of the ancient fathers of Israel. The salvific events of Jesus are especially remembered in this order of liturgy to praise and worship God. The prayers that we recite in the Mass help us to remind constantly the truths taught in Catechism to maintain a strong relationship with God. Liturgical Hymns and Music The order of the Antiochian liturgy is musical. All the prayers are melodious except the homily. The hymns and melodies of the prayers lead to a spiritual enjoyment. There are special hymns for all sacraments, feasts, and prayers of the hours. The thought that he who sings prays twice reveals the importance of music in the order of liturgy. The fathers who composed these Syrian liturgical hymns in the liturgy are Mar Ephraim, Mar Jacob of Sarah, and Mar Balai. There are eight tunes for each hymn, and each tune expresses a particular state or attitude of the occasion of each service. The writings of the fathers of the liturgical hymns are focused on three dimensions. First, the theological dimension. Syriac literature was written mainly as poetry in structure. It was the need of time to propagate the Christian faith against major heresies. Deep theological ideas were expressed through simple melodies. Thus, they founded the Eastern theology and undefiled faith, which are considered as the basis of the later theologians of different Christian denominations. Second, the social dimension. Apart from spiritual homilies, the Syrian fathers wrote homilies for secular and popular use. Their writings had an impact on the social life of the people. Third, the spiritual dimension. Major part of the writings of the fathers were aimed for propagation of faith, prayer, meditation, and corporate worship. Many of the homilies and bubutus are enriched in its contents for meditation which leads to edification. Incensing. Incensing is a practice that is used throughout the celebration of our Holy Corbano. Incensing in the liturgy to a great extent got the influence from the Jewish culture and the Old Testament. Incensing is common in the prayers of the hours, home blessings, Holy Corbano, funeral services, baptism services, and wedding services. Incensing signifies three things. First, the sanctification of the entire worshiping community. Second, signifies a prayer that rises toward heaven to God with smoke rising. Third, indication of honoring and respecting a person or thing. The scriptural references of incensing. First, a psalm attributed to David petitions the Lord. Let my prayer be set forth as incense before you. Second, according to the custom of priesthood, Zechariah to burn incense in the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. Third, the book of Revelation unquestionably indicates that incense is symbolic, or the prayers of saints. Commemoration of the Salutary Events Liturgy emphasizes the salvation history of God. We remember in the Holy Corbano the Old Testament events, birth of Jesus, his baptism, public life, passion, death on the cross, burial, resurrection, ascension, and reigning at the right-hand side of the Father and the Second Coming. The Church commemorates all of Christ's events throughout the order of the liturgical year. Trinitarian Praise All prayers begin with praising the three persons of the Holy Trinity. The Trinitarian Praise is inserted into all the hymns. All prayers end with offering praise and glory to the three persons of the Holy Trinity. The work of the three persons of the Holy Trinity in the act of creation and salvation 
is remembered in the liturgy. Trinitarian praise is a characteristic feature of the liturgy. The Holy Mother of God There are hymns and prayers in the liturgy praising the Holy Mother of God. The Kalma prayer ends with the Hail Mary. At the end of every service, there is a Kukulion, in honor of the Mother of God. The thanksgiving hymn of the Mother of God is recited in every important feast and in the prayers of the hours. My soul magnifies the Lord. It's a thanksgiving hymn of the Mother of God, which is also known as the Magnificent. The public service of Holy Kurbano begins with the commemoration of the Virgin Mary, Mary who gave you birth. Mother of God is given a special position in the Antiochian liturgy as the Mother of the Savior. Respect and Reverential Fear The liturgy is full of wonder, fear, and respect on the basis of the vision of the prophet Isaiah. This liturgy introduces both the glory of God and the sinfulness and limitation of the human being. Based on the vision of Isaiah, the sanctuary is considered as heaven, an altar as the throne on which God sits. The priest represents Christ here on earth and the servers in the sanctuary are considered as angels. The seraphic disc with the picture of angels on the Marvaso signify the hymn of the angels. When using the Marvaso, the face of the angel must always face the people so people can see it as if the angels are descending from heaven. The bell signifies the important events and resembles the sound of thunder. The events that is commemorated at the ringing of the Marvaso are Christ's death on the cross, Moses receiving the Ten Commandments, and the second coming of Jesus. The liturgy signifies the presence of God in the sanctuary and how the angels stand before the glory of the omnipotent God with fear and trembling. This order of the liturgy prepares the faithful to stand before God with reverential fear and respect. Worship The Church entreats in the intercessory prayers during the Holy Kurbano in order that God may mercifully receive the prayers and sacrifice which the people of God offer. Lord, listen to the petition of your worshippers with interest and mercifully accept the same. For you are the one who receives sacrifice. We will offer praise and thanksgiving to you and to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit now and at all times and forever. Life Witness Let us try to make the worship of God most lively and perfect. Having understood the special qualities of the Malinka order of liturgy, and through that, to offer glory to God continuously. Memorize. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Psalms chapter 84 verse 10. Questions. Write a note on the different orders of liturgy that developed in the early church. How was the beginning and growth of the Antiochian order of liturgy? Describe the mysteriousness of the Malinkra order of liturgy. The Antiochian order of liturgy is musical. Please describe. What does the saying that the Holy Kurbano is a commemoration of the salvation mysteries mean? Activity. Explore the symbolisms used in the Malinkra liturgy from the Old and New Testaments. Present it with pictures and the meaning. Find out more signs and symbols to understand the divine mysteries. History St. Thomas came to India in 52 AD. He established seven and a half churches in India. Kodungalore, Palayur, Paravur, Kokamangalam, Niranam, Chayal, Kolam, and Thiruvidam Code. The St. Thomas Christian community had a long association with the Church of the East. The earliest known organized Christian presence in Kerala dates around 300 AD when Nestorian Christian settlers and missionaries from Persia, headed by Bishop David of Basra, settled in the region. According to its tradition, the Church of the East was established by Thomas the Apostle in the first century. Its liturgical rite was the East Syrian rite that employs the divine liturgy of Saints Adai and Marai. From the 4th century till the 16th century, St. Thomas Christians were under the Church of the East. Church of the East was large in the East until it began to decline due to foreign disputes, black death, Islamic conversion, persecutions, and the Great Schism. History continued. The St. Thomas Christians first encountered the Portuguese in 1498 AD during the expedition of Vasco da Gama. 
Portuguese were surprised there was already a Christian-based community in South India. They had a keen interest in implanting their version of Christianity onto the St. Thomas Christians. In the year 1552 AD, the Metropolitan, Mar Jacob, passed away and the schism in the Church of the East began, which resulted into two divisions, Catholic and Orthodox. Both patriarchs sent bishops to India, but the Portuguese consistently managed to outmaneuver them and effectively cut off the St. Thomas Christians from their hierarchy. In 1575 AD, when the Padrodo legislated that neither patriarch could send representatives to India without Portuguese approval. By 1599 AD, the last metropolitan of the St. Thomas Christians, Mar Abraham, had died, and the Archbishop of Goa, Alexios de Menes, had secured the submission of the young Archdeacon George, the highest remaining representatives of the native church hierarchy. History Continued the Archbishop convened the Synod of Diamper, which implemented various liturgical and structural reforms in the Indian Church. They also burned many books pertaining to East Syriac traditions, so St. Thomas Christians can start over. A number of Syriac texts were condemned and ordered burnt, including the Pasitha, the Syriac version of the Bible. The Synod formally brought the St. Thomas Christians into the Catholic Church, but the actions of the Portuguese over the ensuing years fueled resentment in segments of the community, and ultimately led to an open resistance to their power. Portuguese even stopped bishops from coming into India. Over the next several decades, tensions increased between the Portuguese and the remaining native hierarchy. And after 1641 AD, Archdeacon Thomas, the nephew and successor to Archdeacon George, was often at odds with the Latin prelates. In 1652, the escalating situation was further complicated by the appearance in Mylapur of a mysterious figure named Mar Atala, who claimed to have been sent by a Syriac Orthodox Church, the Church of Antioch, to serve as the Patriarch of the whole of India. History continued. Mar Atala was a Syriac Bishop of the Syriac Orthodox Church, who converted to Catholicism. He went to India so he could be the Patriarch of the St. Thomas Christians. St. Thomas Christians were happy to see him, but once Portuguese found out they deported him to Goa. He never died, but was sent to Lisbon on a harsh journey and died on his way to Rome to appeal to the Pope for the St. Thomas Christians. Assuming he was killed, the St. Thomas Christians rebelled, and this started the Kunan Cross Oath, which took place on January 3, 1653. It was a public avowal by members of the St. Thomas Christians, led by the Archdeacon Thomas, that they would not submit to the Jesuits and Latin, Catholic, Portuguese Padrodo dominance in ecclesiastical and secular life. Archdeacon Thomas sent letters to different patriarchs of the East to lead them and St. Gregorios Mar Abdal Jalil of Jerusalem came to India. He was of the Syriac Orthodox Church at the time. He brought with him the Divine Liturgy of St. James and he made the Archdeacon Thomas a bishop with the title Marthoma I. St. Mar Gregorius Abdel Jalil consecrated Marthoma I for legitimacy for the people to see and future bishops were then consecrated later on. This began the Malinkra Jacobite Syrian Church. Those that came under the Syriac Orthodox Church were known as the Putinkur. History continued. During the 250 years after the oath, the Jacobite Church grew but had many internal issues in regards to leadership and foreign influence. Soon, many churches were formed out of the Jacobite Church, the first being the independent Malabar Church, followed by the Marthoma Church. In the early 1900s, the Jacobites had another internal battle that formed two groups, the Bava and Metrin Kashis. Bava Kashi were those who supported the Patriarch of the Syriac Orthodox Church. Metrin Kashi were those who supported the local Metropolitan Bishop. Mar Vanios was on the Metrin Kashi side, and was told by the leader of that faction to start communications with Rome. At that point, the Metrin Kashi was losing ground to control the churches from the Bava Kashi. However, when the Metrin Kashi won the Vatipanam case and regained their land and churches, Mar Venios during that time saw the truth of the Catholic Church and rejoined along with four other members that would make up the five pillars in 1930.